Yo, what's up, War Report family? We are back with another edition of Facts and all the rapid fire questions for y'all. And we going to kick it off in a beautiful fashion, fellas. Y'all ready to get into this? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Let's go. Let's start it off like this. Facts or not, newcomer, freshman, Jarquez Hunter will be the third leading rusher for Auburn this season. I'm actually going to go facts here. And I was of the belief that Devin Barrett was going to be the second leading rusher uh, a few episodes ago when he was announced that he was moving over to play running back. I just don't know where he fits into this current playing rotation. We didn't hear much about him coming out of spring and much has been made about this new kid coming in. And I know Auburn wants to have at least three reliable backs still looking at the transfer portal for another guy. I don't know where Devin Barrett fits. I hope he is in the playing rotation and he gets some significant burn. But it looks like Hunter may be someone that they look forward to the future to actually spell tank as well as Shiver. So I'm going facts here. I'm actually going to go no on this one. Uh, and with the caveat that Bo Nix is going to be our quarterback, so I expect him to be the third leading rusher on this team. Uh, uh, he's got a gift uh, that he can use in his legs. And when plays break down and he has to get out of trouble, I see that happening more than us playing whoever the third back is. So I'm going with Bo as the third leading rusher, and that's a nah for me. I'm going now as well for the same reason that Mike did. I can easily see Bo, if he's a starter for the whole season, pushing past 300, 350 yards on the ground. And I think that's enough to be third place because I know they want to use Shivers to spell Tank. Don't want to wear Tank out, but I still think Tank is a difference maker. Too much of a difference maker to have sitting too much. So he's going to get the bulk of the carries. I don't think we get to third on the running depth. Uh, running back depth unless we have an injury so nah it won't be 100 500 yeah i'm gonna go nah on this as well i do think that jarquez hunter is talented but i honestly still think that they're going to bring in a transfer running back out of the portal and that's who is going to be our third leading rusher um bo nix is probably going to be the other person that i could possibly put up in that in that area uh, if he starts the entire season there's no reason why he couldn't be the third leading rusher um but i think that uh, whoever we bring in as a transfer is going to get the bulk of those th- Third team snaps behind Shivers and Tank, so I'm gonna go now. All right, guys. Facts or not, nah, Auburn will actually utilize the Wildcat package in short yardage situations this upcoming season. What you got? I'm gonna say no nah, because I hope not. I mean, listen, if you need a yard, your offensive line's gonna let your running back do it. Your quarterback's going to be able to make those quick, short throws. Are you going to be able to scheme somebody open real quick? Let's stop. Let's stop doing that. We don't have to do that, man. Let's just, you know, we we can do things that aren't wildcat. So, no. I'm going to say no nah on this one as well. Even though I know uh, Brian Harson is open to doing different things that he's typically done, I don't know that I've seen uh, a Harson offense that incorporated the wildcat. Uh, I don't think a Mike Bobo offense has incorporated the Wildcat. So I just don't know that it necessarily is part of what they've done traditionally. I do think we have people on our team who could possibly do that. And so I wouldn't put it past them, you know, innovating something new into their offensive schemes. But based on what I've seen so far, I'm going to have to go with nah. Nah, no more. Enough. I'm sick of gimmicks. Let's line up and let's play big boy football in short yardage. No more Wildcat. I, 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 we're done with we're done with this, guys. Listen, I don't I don't keep my ex girlfriend stuff after we break up, and I don't want to see any more wildcat crap. Now that Gus is gone, line up and run the ball for a yard, please. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, uh, I'm gonna have to disagree with all three of y'all again and go uh, facts here, and not because I want to see the Wildcat, but Harson has actually utilized the Wildcat before at Boise, so I have no reason to think that he wouldn't utilize it here again. And actually, Mike G, I do keep some of my girlfriend's stuff around her picture (laughs) so I can point at her and laugh at her because I've moved on. And as a result, we're going to be using the Wildcat, and we may be pointing and laughing at the results there too. Hopefully not, but yes, I'm going facts here. Only because Harson has utilized it in the past, we may actually see it on the planes this season. All right, fellas. Facts and all, Roger McCreary will lead the defense in interceptions this upcoming 2021 season. I'm going to go facts here as well. Um, he actually led the team in interceptions last year. Um, 
as much as I like Roger McCreary, I, I think a lot of people are getting a lot of love to Alabama uh, DBs and, and DBs at LSU. So McCreary, for the most part, outside of Auburn, isn't really celebrated as one of the top cornerbacks, but he will be. And I think that as much as teams would probably want to throw away, away from him, they probably will end up throwing in his direction. That kind of makes me want to look at Nehemiah Pritchett or Simpson as someone who could benefit from that. But for now, I'm going to go with facts. I do think that uh, Rick Creary will lead the team in interceptions this upcoming season. I'm going to go nah. I don't think McCreary leads the team in INTs, mostly because I do think people will avoid him. And I count on our staff to mix it up on the back end, get some zone in with some man coverage. So I expect the safety to lead us in INTs this season. And that's the only reason I've got so no. Yeah, I'm going to go nah as well for a lot of the same reasons. Uh, I do actually expect the safety to be our leader in interceptions this season. Um, and actually don't sleep on the possibility of it being a kind of hybrid linebacker, getting a lot of those underneath throws picked off and leading the team in interceptions. Tip passes, mm -hmm. tip balls uh, from the way the defensive line is going to be stacking and shedding uh, up front, allowing for the linebackers to play a little bit more loose. Don't don't sleep on that possibility. I think Roger McCrary is super talented. I've said that many times uh, whether he leads the team in interceptions to be seen yet but i'm gonna go not i'm actually gonna go facts on this one with uh dre Sean miller coming in who we've got a lot of tape on him locking down his side of the field you gotta throw at somebody i think that roger mccrary will be the beneficiary of a lot of people underestimating him this season with dre Sean coming in so uh i don't think there's a safe place to throw the ball on this secondary really it's just who's going to benefit from the other person locking down their side of the field so i do see him leading the team in interceptions. All right, fellas, facts or not. Zacoby McClain will be a Butkus Award semifinalist this season. Uh, I'm going to go nah. I don't want to. I think Zacoby McClain is super talented. It's just the... Uh those awards, man, those are hard to predict. And often it comes down to really how how your team finishes. And I'm still not in the space where I feel like Auburn finishes high enough to put us in the award season prolific in a prolific way. Um, I think Zacoby McClain will again be an awesome. Uh, he's a, I mean, ah, uh, man, it's really hard for me to say this, Zacoby. I think you will deserve it. But I just don't think they're going to get it to you, man. I'm going to have to go not. It's not going to be hard for me. Um, it's not. And and I say that because he just hasn't gotten the love that he should have been getting. He's been one of the more productive linebackers. But I, to Ike's point, I just think that a lot of these awards can be kind of popularity contests and who's the hot team of the moment. And while I think Auburn's defense will be productive and he is definitely one of the leaders of that defense and will be one of the more productive guys, I just don't see him getting the respect, almost kind of similar to, to, to last year where he was one of the more productive linebackers but didn't get a lot of love. So I think this may be a continuation of that unless Auburn is actually successful and has a really good season that could change all that. But for now, I'm going to go knock. Listen, I'm going facts on this one. Team Nyquil is over here sleeping on Zacoby, and I'm telling you, in Derek Mason's 3-4 defense, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for him. He was a monster tackler last year, and I really believe that if he can build on what he did last season as our leading tackler by a long shot, uh, he will end up being a semifinalist for the Buckets Award. So I'm going with facts on this one. Team Dayquil is not sleeping on Zacoby McClain. I'm actually going to say nah, he won't make that semifinalist list. But again, it won't be because he's not productive. And we know he's going to be stout against the run. Leading tackler in the conference, outstanding production. The problem is how these awards are often metered out is who do we expect to be good? Who do we expect? And Riders haven't really been paying attention to an Auburn defensive unit that was slightly subpar last season. And who, honestly, those guys gave Derek Brown and Marlon Davidson all of the credit for us being good the years past. We need eyes. We need big wins to get that type of attention on the defense of what we expect them to be doing. Will we get it? None of us think we're going to go out here and beat Bama and Georgia and LSU. At least not all of them. We'll sneak one or two. But really, it's going to come down to did these guys get enough attention in really, really big games and sneak them? And I don't think we've got that on our schedule quite yet. So, no. Nah. 
All right, you know what time it is. It's time for us to get to the fan question of the week. We appreciate all the submissions you guys have been giving us. It's been wonderful, but we have to pick one. And this week, that honor is going to go to at big underscore underscore gap. He tweets at us, facts and all, Auburn will have a tight end to get 100 receiving this season. So we're going to take this question. We're going to say a game with 100 receiving yards this season. Let's see what we got. I'm going to go facts on this one. I think that in an offense where we're going to be providing more checkdowns for the quarterback, uh, you're going to see the tight ends benefit from that. And that might result in repeated throws to the tight ends when our receivers are covered downfield. Now, we have some new receivers, um, and our tight ends look good during A-Day. So I think that they'll be the beneficiary at least one game of a bunch of checkdowns or second read progressions from the quarterback. I'm going facts. We'll have at least one tight end have a 100-yard game this season. Facts. For every reason Mike just said, Mike G was right. Agree with G. Only Hashtag. this time. That is all. That is it. This is the only time that Mike has been right, ever. Gotcha. But he's right. We're going to have enough dinking and dunking at least once or twice to just feed those tight ends to 100 yards. So, facts. I'm going to go facts here as well. And listen, we got some cupcake games uh, factored into this season. It's not an all SEC slate. I think as we begin to fine tune our offense against some of the more weaker opponents, Bo Nix gets more comfortable in the pocket, begins to go through his progressions a bit more, get a little bit more comfortable. This is a position that we have ignored largely in our offense in past seasons, and defensive coordinators would not be looking for us to attack them in that area. And I look for Harson and Bobo to actually attack them using the tight end position. There will be a tight end on our roster who will benefit in a game or two. And I think that Auburn will definitely have at least one game where a tight end gets more than 100 yards received. Facts. Um, I'm going to go nah here. Um, I just think that we're going to spread the ball out enough that the tight end position may see a lot of receptions. If you'd ask me if the tight end is going to have a 10 plus reception game, then maybe. Uh, but I just don't know that they're going to get more than 100 yards in a single game for one tight end. Uh, maybe tight ends productively throughout a game if you put all of their yardage together in a game would it be over 100 but a single tight end I don't know that I'm ready to say that yet just with the way that I feel like we're going to be spreading it out to different targets throughout the game so uh for right now I'm going to go not until I see it in the tight end position because I've been promised this a lot I'm going to stay or stick with not all right all right that is it for another great edition of facts and not we appreciate you all once again for continuing to submit questions to us but we need more of those keep sending those questions in but make sure you're doing it on twitter you need to hit us with that hashtag facts or not add us at the war report on twitter so you can have your question featured right here outside of that go right now to that like button hit like on that subscribe to the youtube channel leave your comments down here on your opinions on the different questions that we have for today and you need to make sure you are following us on our social media we are at the war report on instagram and twitter we are tw report on tiktok that's it. We are out of here. Signing off. Until the next time. And as always, 